the Dodgers scored five runs again. Mookie Betts hit another home run. Shohei Otani didn't. We'll talk more. Let's get locked on Dodgers. You are locked on Dodgers. Your daily Los Angeles Dodgers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Yo, 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 Dodger fans. Welcome to Locked On Dodgers. We are part of the Locked On Podcast Network, the number one local sports daily podcast network. Locked On, your team every day. Today's episode is here for you. This is a daily podcast covering the Los Angeles Dodgers, bringing you the smart fans' perspective on our boys in blue. You can find us wherever you find podcasts and on YouTube simply by searching for Locked On Dodgers. And you can become an everydayer by listening or watching every day, which can be made easier by subscribing and get notified when our episodes are ready for you. If this is your first time listening or watching, welcome. My name is Vince Samperio, joined by Jeff Snyder, my co-host. Jeff and I are both lifelong Dodger fans that have covered the team uh, in a variety of ways. We've been doing this podcast here for five years. We've been doing a Dodger podcast even longer than that. And we're not quite inside. We're just here to bring you some hopefully smart and rational thoughts about the Dodgers making all of us better Dodger fans in the process. And uh, we're going to try to do that once again today. The Dodgers won. Again, they are 6-2 and two now. They've scored at least five runs in every single game. That has continued. Mookie Betts leads the league. He hit his fifth home run of the season. And, you know, we could put a stat out there that the Dodgers' top three went 5-12. for 12, And it would seem like, oh, okay, that's not, you know, amazing, but still very good. Uh, and then we can tell you that two of those three guys went five for nine, and then that sounds a lot better. Shohei Otani did not get a hit last night, but Mookie Betts and Freddie did. We also got some help from the bottom of the order. And it's just a con- kind of a little bit of a continuation of what we talked about yesterday of the offense, or, or may- yeah, yesterday or maybe even Monday, whatever day it was. Uh, the offense is, is hard to get through multiple times. And uh, they have different guys that can beat you. And, you know, yesterday it was Mookie Betts and Freddie Freeman, the, the usual suspects, but they also got a big hit from Gavin Lux. And they also got uh, some insurance down there in the bottom. James Outman had a hit and and uh, Kike had a hit and, and a couple RBIs. So it was still a game where they got contributions from different guys in the lineup. Yeah, the big guys got it going, but then it was – that bottom of the order that's that drove in the last three runs in a big inning that ended up being the deciding runs. Uh, I'm glad the Dodgers won this game, so I don't have to use one of my two times talking about the umpires because Phil Cuzzy was bad at, at in this game. I know Patrick Bailey is an elite framer, uh, but th- this ain't Phil Cuzzy's first rodeo with being a bad umpire, and uh, it was. I'm excited to see the scorecard in the morning since the Dodgers won the game. I would be uh, dreading it if they had lost, but I don't have to talk about that because they did win. Uh, Yeah. All in all, like basically the whole offense contributed uh, not necessarily every single player, but the up and down the lineup, you got contributions. And I mean, Logan Webb is a very good pitcher. Uh, He's even better when he's getting pitches five inches off the plate called strikes. And the Dodgers put 14 balls in play against him, and 10 of them had an expected batting average of at least 6'10". Six of them were hit 100 miles an hour or harder. Like, they pounded Logan Webb. He got his fair share of strikeouts, uh, partly thanks to the umpire, but, you know, also because he's a good pitcher. But when the Dodgers put the bat on the ball, they really put the bat on the ball. They knocked him out in the fourth inning. He didn't even get through four innings, uh, which is huge. All five of the runs they scored came off – the guy who finished second the Cy Young voting last year, uh, which is and and he, Logan Webb's had his share of success against the Dodgers in the past. Uh, he's very good, and he has treated them poorly in the past. So it was nice to see them return the favor a little bit. Yeah, and this is the game where Logan Webb, number two in Cy Young voting last year, against the bullpen game, uh, and not even a good Dodgers bullpen, a little bit of a shaky Dodgers bullpen, and the Dodgers got the win. And you know, credit to the offense, credit to the bullpen for doing enough to to keep it where they needed to. And, yeah, it, it, it's – I mean, we're, I just want to talk about Mookie Bates because, you know, Mookie said after the game, Kirsten kind of asked him about the hot start, and, you know, Mookie said he's been a notoriously slow starter, and we've talked about that the last two seasons when he has started slow. Last year, I think he had one homer by the end of April, uh, and he already has five, and it's April 2nd. So, it, it, you know, it, it's one of those things where – 
whether he's – I think shortstop might have helped out like that move to shortstop. You're just – when you get locked in on on one part and you have to like really really work at it and and you know he's taking a lot of ground. There's an article by Fabian Ardai in the Athletic kind of talking about that. You know Mookie taking so many ground balls before the game and and everything else. And maybe it's taking away from thinking at the plate a little bit. Like he's so you know much in, ingrained in okay I'm you know taking all these ground balls before the game and even in the dugout they showed after his home run he's working on you know the the, the throw he's trying to or the the arm action he's trying to get when he's making throws from shortstop and you know, maybe that's helping him out. Maybe not. We're, we're not going to project it on him, but he's definitely locked in right now. And it, the, the big difference too, like last year, he obviously hit the 39 home runs, but a lot of those home runs that he hit were some that he had to sprint to first base still because he wasn't sure they were getting out. The ones he's hitting this year, all but one, I think have been no doubters and he gets to stare at it and enjoy it a little bit. And, and that's fun to see. Yeah. I, I don't know if it was that same article by Fabian that, uh, that you're talking about, but Joe and Oral mentioned on yesterday's broadcast that, Freddie Freeman had suggested that, that maybe the fact that he is having to focus so much on defense means he can just go up there and hit and not think about hitting. Don't stress about hitting and, and just do what comes naturally. And when you watch him hit, it does look like he just looks comfortable and just kind of doing what comes naturally. And, you know, I know everybody, when they're hot, that's what they look like. That's kind of the definition of a hot hitter is it looks like it's easy for him and doesn't mean it is easy and doesn't mean it's going to stay easy. But right now you watch him hit like even even that strikeout, you know, the the strikeout in his fourth at bat when he struck out looking, that was just, you know, he got fooled by a curveball. He didn't think it was going to get back over to the, you know, and it was a full count pitch. I think uh, he didn't think it was going to get back to the strike zone and it did. You know, that's what it is. And then the the last one struck out swinging that that kid. What would you tell me his name? Ryan Walker. Ryan Walker. Yeah. Yeah. Um, He's got good stuff and, and, you know, obviously deceptive. He looks like I was actually talking to my brother the other day. How much different would our perception of baseball be if the center field cameras were on the other side of second base? Because right right now, when you watch a left handed hitter against a tough lefty, it's like he's never going to be able to get the get a hit. Uh, but right handers, you don't have that same perception. But I wonder, like because of the way Walker throws, he he throws like chris sale or one of those other weird lefties with a weird lefty delivery and so you wonder if the if the camera was on the other side of second base if we'd be having that same feeling watching walker pitch like how is any right-hander ever going to get a hit off this guy uh i mean he's got good stuff he, he throws harder than a lot of guys with those funky light a lot of those crafty lefties do obviously chris sale throws hard but the crafty lefties a lot of times don't throw very hard but walker throws hard has good stuff and so yeah i mean sometimes the pitcher just wins and and mookie got struck out there uh, but all in all, like he he looks comfortable in the batter's box most of the time, and and even like his first time up, it was a bloop single, but it was because he fought off a tough pitch and still got uh, a good swing on it to to put in. You don't have to hit the ball hard. Obviously, your you know your best chance of getting a hit is hitting the ball hard. But we Willie Keeler said 120 years ago, hit it where they ain't, and that works for Mookie too. Uh, worked for Freddie later in the game. Uh, Although Matt Chapman made that thing close on Freddie's infield. Like, I didn't think there would even be a play. Uh, and then Chapman almost threw out. Matt Chapman's good at defense. I, I I don't like how much the the Giants improved their defense this year. Yeah. And, you know, on one more part on the Mookie front is when he did get that single to first, and then he ends up stealing second. And, you know, he doesn't score maybe if he doesn't do that. You know, Freddie knocks him in after that. And it's these little things here and there. Like, the power is there. He's hit the homers. Tay Oscar's hit the homers. Freddie has a couple homers. You know, but a lot of the Dodgers offense so far has been, you know, not small ball, but just good situational hitting and, you know, taking advantage on the bases. And, you know, when you're putting all that together, that just gives you that many different ways to score we're obviously all going to come down to when it what happens in October, but you know, they, they do strike out still a little bit of a, of a fair amount, but they also put the ball in play when they do put the ball in play, it's usually hit hard this season. And that's, you know, a recipe for success. Yeah, for sure. And, and Mookie sets that tone for everybody. Yeah. Well, the, like we mentioned, they had a bullpen game. Uh, it, maybe didn't go the way everyone wanted to on the Dodgers side, but it, it did work out. Uh, but it's April 2nd. Should we be having a bullpen game to save arms? We'll talk about that and what it might mean for the rest of the season. So let's make sure to keep it locked on Dodgers. Today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. 
Price picks is fun. I'm not gonna lie. I've been I've been using it for a few weeks now, and especially with baseball. You know, before I was basketball and different sports, and while I'm into those sports, uh, not quite my area of expertise. But now it's baseball season, and Price Picks is just fun to use. You can go check it out, and, and basically what you're doing it's a daily fantasy sports app, and you're picking more or less on different uh stats for different players so if you have mookie bets over uh on or or more on total bases uh in most of these last few games you're, you're gonna hit that over with just one swing of the bat from mookie and you can get up to 100 time payout so you can put five bucks down and you could win up to 500 bucks if you get you know the 100 times payout or different variations beyond that so go check out price picks i'm telling you if you're a baseball fan and and you you know know enough about it it's definitely fun to to go and check and pick out all those players and pick more or less and you know use those demons for those extra multipliers and, and try to get big money so go check out and download the price picks app today and if you use the code locked on mlb you'll get a first deposit match up to 100 dollars. that's download the price picks app use the code locked on mlb in all lower cases and get a first deposit match up to 100 dollars. price picks pick more pick less it's that easy If you're tired of watching Fox Sports or ESPN all day because you have to turn on the volume with all that shouting, make the switch to Locked On Sports today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news, streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. You can also check out Lockdown Sports Los Angeles, which is the same thing, but for LA sports specifically. And we want to thank you for making us your first listen every single morning. Uh, We had a Lockdown Dodgers insider text us earlier and said that we have been a part of his weight loss journey. He's lost 60 pounds listening to us at the gym every morning. So apparently we're, we're not maybe as motivated as he is, but we're definitely in the motivating business, Jeff. Yeah, and uh, that's Mark. He listens to our show, even though I do sometimes complain about umpires. The way I actually met, the way Mark found out about our show is he used to umpire for my son's uh, Little League games, and I was talking to him between innings one time and found out he was a Dodger fan, so I told him about the show. So we become good friends. He lives here in Utah. But, yeah, that's awesome. Mark had a knee replacement recently and uh, been working off the weight. It's, uh, yeah, glad to be a part of that. Maybe we should uh, be a part of that for ourselves for a little bit, Vince. <laughs> I did it last year, and then I uh, kind of gave up on it. So we'll, we we'll can't walk on a treadmill while we record the show. Yeah, yeah. I guess we could, but uh, I, I don't have the technology in my house. Come listen for that to two right fat now. guys be out of breath while they talk <laughs> about the Dodgers. Yeah. All <laughs> right. Uh, so the Dodgers had a bullpen game. We we talked about it yesterday, and like I said, it, it worked out. They allowed four runs, uh, but with this offense, four runs is, is good going to be good enough most of the time. And you had Ryan Brazier start the game. He went in inning. Yeah, Yarbrough take up the bulk of the innings and gave up, uh, you know, most of or all the runs, charged with all the runs. Uh, he went four and a third, and then he had Vesia, Grove, and Phillips. Phillips ended up having to get four outs because, uh, you know, they were in a tough spot. Michael Grove was supposed to try to give him two innings. Even though we're at, or I've been advocating for Grove to be one inning, and it was one inning, eight pitches, perfect. I knew they were going to run him back out there because one, they kind of needed him to, and two, like eight pitches. You feel like he can go do it. Uh, didn't quite work out. He didn't make it out of that second inning. But regardless of it, yeah, a, a bullpen game. We thought about it in the sense of if they're doing bullpen games on April second, when Walker Buehler does come back after his next three rehab starts, and assuming everyone else stays healthy, yeah, they're just going to have a six man rotation. It, it seems like it to me. It seems like the, the plan can't possibly be to do bullpen games regularly. Uh, and they are going to have, I mean, we talked yesterday, the, the five guys in the rotation right now have all pitched really well. Like there's no, no reason to take any of them out of the rotation. When Bueller returns, you will still have all of the reasons that you might want to do a six man rotation. You got uh, Miller and Stone, who are both just in their second year, so you might want to be uh, keeping an eye on their innings counts. You got Glasnow and Bueller and Paxton, all with injury histories, and you have Yamamoto in his first season, not on a once a week schedule. Like a, a six man rotation has never made more sense for any team than it does for this Dodgers team right now, especially because heading into next year, 
you know, they're going to have Shohei Otani back, who has always kind of been on that once a week schedule pitching. They might have Roki Sasaki. We're probably going to talk more about that in our off day episode this week. There's been some Roki Sasaki tough, Roki Sasaki talk. Um, there, you know, there's this Dodgers team seems destined to be a six man rotation team for the next few years. And I don't see any reason not to start it as soon as Bueller's ready. Yeah. You know, obviously they're, with five men, six men, whatever, there's always going to be risk involved. The six man is a little riskier because you do need starters to have that length. And it's one of those where, you know, you, if you do go that route, there may be times where guys have to wear it a little bit more often than, than maybe they would right now, just because of the simple fact that you have six relievers, uh, you know, depending who you keep, like, this is why another reason like advocating for, for Grove to kind of become a one inning guy, because, I would, if he's going to do one inning, then he can go multiple times in a week rather than once every two, three days. You know, Yarbrough's already kind of that guy that can give you bulk innings uh, over, you know, but he can only really pitch once or maybe twice a week, depending on, you know, end of the spectrum of the week. So it is one of those, you know, caught hurt as well. Like the, you kind of have to start using guys differently and, you know, having that six man rotation would be beneficial on the front end, but then on the back end, it's either one, you need that front end to really work in order to save your back end, or you're going to have kind of a rotating way of aren't like you're going to have guys that are either have options or, you know, use the lament spot as a DFA, bring someone up or DFA, bring someone up or, or, you know, use the injured list or whatever you need to do. Uh, so yeah, there, there's obviously drawbacks to it, but um, realistically you need your starters healthy into October. And that's what that would accomplish. Oh, that what it would hope to accomplish. Yeah, and re really, if you do a go with a six-man rotation, you're you're basically telling the guys, look, you're getting an extra day of rest every time, and so you are throwing a hundred pitches every time, every start, um, and, and going to use that extra day of rest, and then that way, hopefully, you know, you get through seven innings. Sometimes you get through six innings almost all the time, uh, and, and that way you do have. I mean, if you can get six innings from every starter, seven relievers is plenty. To, to get through it, especially when one of them is Yarbrough, you know, Oh, eat six innings and we're up by five runs. Cool. Yarbrough finished this one off, reset the bullpen for everybody. Uh, you know, and then, you know, seven innings and we're up by six. Okay. Michael Grove, take these two innings just to give Vince a heart attack. And, you know, uh, you can kind of reset things that way uh, because, you know, guys can go two out of three games, not, not, maybe not consistently, but uh, so, yeah, I, I think a six man rotation could work uh, and with with the days off too, you know, because you also have actually built in days off and the Dodgers, because they start in Korea, they're going to have two more days off this season than the rest of the teams. And so, you know, your bullpen gets a little bit of rest that rest there. Um, you know, you, you know, me, I, I advocate for fewer pitchers on a roster, but with the 13 man limit as it is right now, uh, I, I don't like the idea of a, of a, six man rotation from a baseball purist standpoint, but from a, I want the 2024 Dodgers to be ex as successful and healthy as possible standpoint. I think it just is almost a no brainer. Yeah. Miscounted uh, gave to six relievers, but it is seven. Uh, that does help that obviously, but yeah, in the sense of the way the rules are constructed right now, it makes sense for the Dodgers to go there. So yeah, when, as you kind of alluded to having less pitchers, you would obviously have to, have those arms built up differently. You, know, you need a full off season for that, but yeah, the way it's kind of built right now, the Dodgers can take advantage of that and make it work. And hopefully we'll see, like they said, uh, by the time Bueller's healthy, uh, there's always a chance that somebody that's currently in the rotation won't be. And that might just, you know, become uh, something in itself. Yeah. And you do wonder if they did go to a six man rotation, if they would have to use that OKC shuttle, um, because, you know, they don't have a ton of guys with options available. They've got Michael Grove, you know, as far as guys in the bullpen, um, really, I mean, I don't think Vesia has any left does he, or does he still have one? Um, I can't remember for sure, but you got, you got Grove and, and you know, the, the new guy, they just, uh, which we're going to talk about in the next segment that they just traded for from the Yankees Ramirez he has one option year left and uh and he's using his last option year this year so uh you know he's a guy and he's a lefty so they could whether if if he replaces Vessi or whatever so you know you do have a couple spots where you could say okay Landon Knack you're up for a little while Kyle Hurt you're up for a little while 
Um, and, and it would have to be because of the limits on how many times they can option a guy. But, you know, there, there's plenty of ways to get it done, and it does seem like that's what they're heading towards. Uh, even if it's not a permanent six-man rotation, at least for the next little while. Um, and, and, of course, as we always mention, these decisions are usually made by the injured list for them. Maybe they're not going to have six healthy starters at the same time anyway. Uh, but but if they do, I think that's the way they'd go. Yeah, you talked about Ramirez, and the Dodgers have a few other Names that were added to the roster, names that were subtracted from the roster, names that were moved to the injured, the long-term injured list, 60-day. We're going to talk about all that, so make sure to keep it locked on Dodgers. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. If you've ever been frustrated looking for tickets or an event is sold out, it's never really sold out because there's apps like Game Time. Game Time is now an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball. So if the Dodger game says it's sold out, you can still find tickets on there. And most of the time, prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to first pitch because they got killer last minute deals. Also, they got views from your seat on the app, all in prices and their lowest price guarantee, the Game Time guarantee, which takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. Because if you find tickets in your same section and row for cheaper, they'll refund you 110 or they'll credit you 110% of the difference. And Game Time tickets are always covered with the most flexible customer service policy in the ticketing industry. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. And for a limited time, all users can get $20 off any MLB purchase of $150 or more in the game time app with code first pitch terms apply that's first pitch f-i-r-s-t-p-i-t-c-h for twenty dollars off from march 5th to april 14th only download the game time app today last minute tickets lowest price guaranteed I want to thank you for being an everydayer if you are one. If you're not an everydayer, you can become one by listening or watching every day. Hopefully, we're picking up new everydayers as our this week has been very good for the Dodgers, Locked On Dodgers, uh, YouTube, and and uh, audio download. So make sure if you're here for the first time, you stick around, become an everydayer. You can also go beyond the podcast and become a Locked On Dodgers insider at joinsubtext.com slash Locked On Dodgers, Locked On Dodgers Insiders. Get news and reactions and thoughts from us directly to their phone via text message almost every single day. And now, uh, you know, we we have provided Locked On Dodgers, our, uh, our Locked On Dodgers insiders with a small gift that they will be receiving. And that might be something else that happens the rest of the way. So go to joinsubtext.com slash Locked On Dodgers and uh, get in on the action and have some fun. All right, uh, Jeff, there was a lot of movement in the Dodgers system on Tuesday. They first claimed Taylor Trammell off waivers from the Mariners uh, in order to make room for him. They straight up released Matt Gage, the left AP they got from the Yankees in the Caleb Ferguson trade. And then they later on acquired Nick Ramirez from the Yankees for cash considerations. Uh, in order to make room for him, they transferred Bruce Dark Gradrall to the 60-day injured list. And then Jason Hayward, not on the injured list yet, uh, but did go get scans done and everything came back negative. Um, but not sure if he's going to need that injured list stint. But Taylor Trammell does not have any options, so he would have to go on the active roster. I think what they have two days or, or one or two days before they have to make that decision on Hayward and Trammell. But yeah, I don't know wherever you want to get started because there was a lot to happen. Yeah, Tremel is exciting to me. Like he's a guy who's hit well in AAA. He is a former consensus top prospect. Like going into 2019, he was somewhere between 11th and I think 21st on all of the prospect lists, in, in, you know, in all of baseball. So he was a legit top 20 prospect uh, in baseball. And he's just never put it together in the big leagues. He's played good defense. Uh, solid defense at least and, and but he's never hit like he has a 168 career batting average in 351 plate appearances in the big leagues 639 ops uh you know he takes a walk he does have some power he's got the 15 homers in 351 plate appearances so i mean that's 30 homer power over the course of a season uh, but when you look at that 168 uh and then you know it, it's hard to have a good enough on base percentage to be valuable when you're batting 168 like 
Uh, he has a good walk rate, but not good enough because it only gets the on base percentage up to 270. You cannot be a valuable player with a 270 on base percentage. That's going to be the big question. And, you know, the Dodgers, maybe they see something in him. Maybe they just see, hey, he's a left handed hitting outfielder who's available for free. And our left handed hitting outfielder is going on the injured list. So let's get Trammell. Um, like you said, he doesn't have options left. And so, like the most likely outcome here is Tramell is on the Dodgers roster for the two or four weeks while Hayward's hurt, and then he's DFA'd. But two years ago, that was the most likely option for Trace Thompson too. Remember, the Dodgers got Trace Thompson just because Mookie Bur Mookie Betts what fractured a rib or something in an outfield collision, and then Trace ended up staying on the roster the rest of the time, becoming an important part of the team, and even getting a, a contract for the next year. Um, and Taylor Trammell is a more talented baseball player than Trace Thompson as far as pure talent goes. Uh, he hasn't turned it, you know, or shown anything at the big league level, but neither had Trace Thompson. And you know, but also the fact that I'm our, our kind of our best case scenario here is he turns into Trace Thompson tells you, you know, how uh, how excited we probably ought to be. Uh, but you know what? Stranger things has happened than Taylor Trammell turning into a decent big leaguer. Yeah, and. You know, looking at his splits and in, in the career, and obviously there's, you know, three, I think three seasons of, of small sample sizes, but he does hit better against righties. He His OPS is 727 against righties, slugging at 434. Now batting average 193 on base, 292. Not amazing, not still, but, you know, 13 doubles, 14 home runs in 228 at-bats. Like, that's pretty good. Uh, he has gotten... 90 plate appearances, 76 at bats against lefties in his career, and he's hitting 092 with the 376 OPS. So if you keep him strictly to facing right handers, which is what Jason Hayward does, if that's what you replace on the roster, you could get decent enough returns to make it worth it. And hopefully, maybe try to find a way to keep like if they do see something, try to keep them in it. Uh, you know, maybe go to the the hitting lab and uh work on something and then can maybe become a valuable piece at some point and then you know jason hayward wasn't doing much beforehand uh so even if he comes in and does slightly better than that for however long it takes uh that would be beneficial yeah and obviously the big thing with him he just strikes out too much at the big league level and you know that basically everything about him would be better if he stopped striking out so much and that is absolutely something that a good hitting coach could maybe help him figure out. So it's not out of the question. Uh, Tremel has been involved in two high profile trades in his career. He was part of that three team trade. The way he went from the Reds to the Padres was a three team trade between the Padres, Indians, and Reds in 2019. The trade that sent Trevor Bauer to the Reds and sent Yasiel Puig to the Indians. Uh, a couple Dodger ties there uh, with, you know. <laughs> I, I won't finish that sentence. And then in 2020, he was part of the Mariners Padres trade, went to the Mariners in the Thai France for Austin Nola trade uh, that also included like eight other guys, including Taylor Trammell. So he's been traded plenty. Uh, but yeah, you know what? I'm I'm excited. Like I I've always liked him as a player and I think he has enough talent and he's young enough. He's what, 26 years old uh, that it's not crazy to think that the Dodgers could be the team to unlock his potential and turn him into the average big leaguer that he probably ought to be. Yeah. The other guy they got, Nick Ramirez, uh, also left-handed, left-handed pitcher from the Yankees. You know, they released they, – they are first to say they had DFA'd Matt Gage, then they ended up releasing him in the Tramiel News. A little bit interesting, but uh, he is on the injured list in the minors right now. So I, one of the beat guys said maybe they're just trying to sneak him through and, and nobody will pick him up and, you know, they can keep him on the roster. So that that's very possible there. But, yeah, Ramirez, you know, we've talked about the Dodgers possibly needing left-handed reliever. He's not a guy that strikes out a ton of people, but he did have a pretty solid year last year. He did His, his uh, ERA was 226, if I'm not mistaken, his FIP uh, just – around the same like he 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 was a good pitcher just doesn't get those strikeouts yeah 266 era 294 fip uh and to have a fip that that good without many strikeouts says he also doesn't walk anybody and doesn't give up home runs and you know what we'll we'll take that uh, put the ball in play the dodgers have especially like we saw on tuesday night uh late in innings when a reliever is likely to be in there's probably going to be better defense the dodgers might go to their defense uh defensive alignment 
you know, he's a uh, Nick Ramirez is another guy who we might not think about him very much as year, or he might end up playing a big part in the Dodgers bullpen. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see uh, because he does have options. He's not a guy they're likely to DFA in a couple of weeks, but also neither was Matt Gage. And then boom, he's gone. You know, sometimes you just need the 40 man roster spot. And the Dodgers do have several guys on the 60 day IL now, including another one, the guy they put there, they put Bruce Dar all there to make room for Ramirez. Uh, and, you know, Gratterall is going to be eligible on May 18th, uh, along with, with Emmett Sheehan, they'll both be eligible to come back. And at that point, the Dodgers will need 40 man roster spots whenever those guys are ready. Uh, and, and so, you know, whether it is Ramirez or Trammell or, you know, Denelson Lamette or whoever, uh, there's some DFAs coming probably. Um, but, but for now, Ramirez could be, I mean, Vesia pitched on Tuesday night and, uh, had one good, he got both guys out that he faced and one of them was maybe lucky to get out. Uh, it was almost a three run Homer and the other one, it was, it was a good at bat. Uh, and so, you know, Vesia is so hard to figure out because he does have good stuff. He strikes out a lot of guys when he can throw strikes, he's often pretty good. Um, and you know, so I don't know if Ramirez is likely to replace Vesia, uh, but you know, he, Somewhere along the line, we'll probably see Ramirez in the big leagues. Yeah, the one quick note on Ramirez, too, is that he's not maybe not a multi-inning guy, but he's a guy who's thrown multiple innings before uh, in his career. He's pitched in 96 games, and he has 151 innings. Last year, pitched in 32 games and has 40 innings pitched. So, obviously, he was going uh, you know, either multiple innings or, or multiple outs beyond three outs. Uh, a few times so that could be beneficial for what they need right now like it could be just hey if this guy was available um we're gonna throw a bullpen game we're probably gonna need innings in the next couple of days and we'll get him out there throw him his innings and then maybe somebody else comes up after that yeah absolutely and by the way i checked fan graphs alex vesey according to fan graphs does have one option left and so he could be another guy who's on that okc shuttle just for usage reasons if nothing else yeah so a lot happening. The Dodgers close out the series against the Giants tonight, and then they have a day off. And, uh, you know, days off are not as fun, but I feel like we've had a lot this last week, so maybe a day off isn't the worst thing. So, yeah, that's going to do it for today's episode. Thank you all for listening. Thank you for making Locked On Dodgers your first listen of the day. Make sure to become an everydayer by listening or watching every day. And remember, you can go beyond the podcast and become a Locked On Dodgers insider at joinsubtext.com slash Locked On Dodgers. You can text directly with us and get our get news, thoughts, reactions straight from us. You can also check out Locked On Sports Today, Locked On Sports Los Angeles, 24-7 streaming channels on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Go subscribe to those if you're interested. You can find us on social media, Twitter and Instagram and TikTok at Locked on Dodgers. Jeff's on Twitter at Snydog. I'm at Vincent's 91 and DM us for any questions or comments. You can also send those via email, LockedOnDodgers at gmail.com or via voicemail text at 323-863-5625. We're here every weekday morning and we hope you'll be here with us when you get in your car. If you're at home, take your device by podcast, Locked on Dodgers. And remember, you don't have to agree. You just have to listen. Have a good one. We'll talk to you tomorrow.